The minister nominee for employment was first confronted with the issue of employment statistics. He indicated that so far the Kufuado administration had created 3 million jobs. On the number of jobs, uh, yes, it is true. On 1st May 2018, I indicated that uh, the government of Nana Adodankwa Kufuado had created um, approximately 1 million jobs. And uh, even though I don't have the exact figures for end of 2020. The last time we reported on was in September 2020, and then the figure was around 3 million jobs. 3 million jobs. Yes. Uh, Minister Nomni, thank you. How was the 3 million jobs created and the distribution? You want to share the statistics with us sector by sector? Thank you, Chair. Honorable Chair, I will make the details available to the committee when I get back to it. But um, I think that I have, on a number of occasions, even come to this house and have given these figures out already. But uh, if, if still it is, the, it is the pleasure of the committee to have the details are more than um, more than willing. He also answered questions on the predicament of casual workers in the country. Managing and not going against the law in itself is not an offense. But if you are also not very careful, you will also have people who will take advantage of the law and then will be abusing the right of people. And and that's exactly what the honorable uh, 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 member is referring to. Indeed, if, if they, they manage their labor the way he described it, as I said, it is not against the law. But you and I also agree that that is not the best way to do because everybody enters employment and will want to be assured that he has a reliable job every day. He doesn't get up one day and then he's told that tomorrow you can't no longer come to work. But, but fortunately for us, fortunately for us, what we are doing is that we have identified some of these weak posts within the Act, and uh, we have started a process of amending aspects of the law. Indeed, we've gone very far with our development partners to tease out those areas which we think are not of major interest to the public, and therefore we are trying as much as possible to German, address uh, with Casual workers have no guarantee of employment security. Casual workers in Ghana have no guarantee of income. Some of them are abused and paid below even the minimum wage in people's homes quietly. How do you seek to address that? If, if anybody engages somebody and then pays the person below the minimum wage, that is against the law. That, that is against the law. You, you can't engage somebody and pay that person below the minimum wage. Because the minimum wage is that wage below which you cannot engage somebody and then pay the person. So if you so pay the person below the minimum wage, you are acting illegally. But then if you engage the person within the period before the six months and disengage that person, that one is not against the act. But, but to answer my to answer the leader, let me, let me say that it is not just one aspect of the act which is being amended. We have actually had a stakeholder meeting and we have sent words to them that they should actually look at the act and make proposals as to which areas they think needs to be amended. So we have had several proposals. It would be unwise for me to say that it is only this aspect that is being amended. Depending on what the stakeholder is looking at, we get uh, feedback from many of them. Next was Sarah Joasa for heading for the Gender, Children and Social Protection Ministry. She commented on the steps to improve the national school feeding program. Mr. Chairman, I strongly believe that the school feeding program as one of the social intervention or social protection programs has a purpose for which it was um, introduced, which is also to make sure that we have our children served meals in school, hot meals to keep them in school, 
more especially with the needy students. Mr. Chair, we must admit as a country that the intention and purpose for this scheme is good, but we have some lapses within it that we ought to look at as a nation and as a parliament and as the gender committee of parliament. When I'm given the nod, I will engage this house and the committee as well to see how these lapses can be, um, can be streamlined properly. Be it NPP, NDC, we all have to accept that there are challenges. Sometimes there are intermediaries even in between the caterers, which compromises even on the quality of food that has been served to these children, which is not the ultimate purpose for introducing the scheme. So when I'm giving the nod, I'll engage further and we'll all streamline things to make it better. Thank you. She unveiled her approach for dealing with the matter of which comes in the country. Mr. Chair, if I'm given the nod, what I will first do is to engage and visit some of the camps and engage these um, alleged witches. I will further engage um, the traditional leaders and opinion leaders in these areas to get a very clear picture of what indeed ought to be done. That is not to say that the ministry hasn't done anything. I have chanced my, I chanced on some documents which indicated that in Kambaga, which come for instance, there are 16, uh, 600 inmates. When they were engaged, only one was prepared to come back home. So I believe that a rebranding of these camps, because as far as the women are concerned, they have found family in these camps. She answered questions on the controversial issue of LGBTQ rights. The, chair, the issue of LGBT is an issue that, when mentioned, um, it creates some controversy, but what I want to say is that our laws are clear on such practices. It makes it criminal. Section 104 of the Criminal Code prohibits one from having unnatural carnal knowledge with another person. So on the issue of its criminality, it is non-negotiable. On the issue of our cultural acceptance and norms, to these practices are also frowned upon. And so for me, these are two distinct clarity on the matter. And th that is what I strongly stand for. Thank you.